Hello, everyone. Welcome to Circuit Stream's fifth edition of Demo Day. Today, we're celebrating the graduates of the Interaction Design and Prototyping for XR course with special guests Gabriele Homagnoli and Dmitry Kurilchenko from Shapes XR and Zivoli. If you can hear me, if you can see me, definitely let me know in the chat. There's a little bit, and also it's important for me to say that on this platform, there's about a second, seven second delay from when you're writing the chat and from when I can see it. So let me just check here. Oh, there's the pop-up chat. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm getting those answers. You can hear me and you can see me. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so I'd let, love to start us off with uh, letting, you know, say hello and let me know if uh, where you're tuning in from. Oh, let me just get this. Uh, there we go. Okay. This awkward bar of the way. And there we go. All right. So I see that we have Andy from New York. Hey, Andy. Hey, Melvin. You're tuning in from Toronto and you're considering taking the XR development with Unity course this coming November. Perfect. Well, you've definitely come to the right place. Today, we're going to be showcasing the design graduates, but um, it's all, it, you can already get a sense of what you'll be able to do. All right. So, oh, hey, Louise. Perfect. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Andrew. Oh, we have um, hello from Romania. Void. Welcome, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Whoa, hey, Louise. Mark Porter, brilliant, loud and clear from Ireland. Perfect, Andrew from Boulder, Colorado. Umberto from Denver, Colorado as well. Hey, Leo, tuning in from Calgary. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, definitely continue to let us know where you're tuning in from. It just helps this global community to feel connected. And hey, Peter from Nelson, BC. Oh, I heard it's beautiful over there. Nice, nice way to go. All right, so let's kick things off and get things started. I'm going to start us off with uh, the agenda for the day. So I'm going to give a, a brief introduction uh, about who we are, our special guest today, and kind of, um, you know, which course these students did, what they worked through, what you can be expecting for their projects. And then we're going to dive into the student projects. Uh, it's about a 60 minute for that. Each student will have around 10 minutes to present the project, explain a little bit about it, why they took the course, things that they ran into. And then after they're done presenting, I'm going to invite you all in the audience to ask questions and comments. So definitely do not be shy. And then we're going to close each student off with some special feedback from uh, our special guests of the day. So Dima, and um, Gabriele. And then at the end, there's going to be a really fun prize draw. So uh, be sure to stay until then and a quick wrap up. And then, <laughs> so we have lots planned for today. Um, right afterwards, we're going to have a post show discussion in VR, in Old Space VR, where you can, you know, talk to all of the students, everybody else that uh, attended this event. You can talk to some of our instructors, you can talk to the special guests. So it's going to be a great and casual opportunity to ask more questions. Uh, so, you know, definitely I encourage you to tune in then if you can. And hey, Colin from San Francisco. Very, very nice. All right. So uh, who are we? So some of you might know me already. I'm Luciana Fortes, but you can call me Lucy. I'm the student experience coordinator at CircuitStream. So I'm responsible for making sure that students feel supported in their educational journey with us and really have everything they need to thrive. I've also been called, you know, the fun guru, you know, great experience specialist. So those are other roles and titles that I go by. I have over seven years of experience in education with university prep and student experience. And a fun fact about me, we always like mention fun facts is that in 2016, I danced in the opening ceremony of the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games and both of my degrees are in dance. Hiya, Chris, great to see you here. Great to see more people to in. All right, and as for our special guest today, we're really excited to have Dimitri Kurichenko. Dima, you're gonna have to correct me if I'm saying your name uh, wrong. I do apologize about that. So Dima is the co-founder and CTO at Tivori. 
Um, he has over seven years of experience in VR in both development and design. In terms of some, just some of his uh, VR projects, he's done 14 projects related to VR since 2014, from experiments and hackathons to projects with Google, Unity, and Cartoon Network. I definitely want to ask him more about that. And um, he ha he made an award-winning experimental game that was awarded by Oculus in 2015. VR Boss. Yes, I agree, Chris. Uh, hey, Sonia. And boy, I've already tested Altspace VR, and it's pretty cool, though VR chat is cool as well. Brilliant. Definitely want to see you there, boy. All right. And as for Gabrielli uh, Romagnoli, Gabrielli is an expert in VR for design and collaboration. He's the head of community at Tivari, and he's inspiring the masses to create for and in virtual reality. You do have to check out his LinkedIn. He's always posting some of the coolest things that are happening in XR, so you should definitely check it out. And he learned to make cool videos by creating clips of him and his friends jumping on rooftops. Wow, kids, do not try this at home. Uh, so I'm going to write that down to ask him about that later on as well. All right, so um, Dima and Gabrielli are both the forces behind Shapes XR. Shapes XR is a brilliant multiplayer design and prototyping software for immersive experiences that makes creating and communicating early ideas accessible and effective. So if you are a designer, if you're an XR designer, or if you're in design, definitely an amazing tool to check out. Um, Chris is saying amazing, cool, and creative people. You bet, you bet. All right, so what about us here at Circuit Stream? So Circuit Stream was founded in 2015. And since then, we're really proud to say that we've had over 40,000 learners. So we were we founded Circuit Stream in order to provide uh, the next set of training for XR professionals and enthusiasts when we noticed that there was a gap in the educational sector in terms of providing that training in XR. Uh, and we are proud to say that we are a Unity certified training and channel partner. We have a really close relationship with them. So channel partners are approved based on their expertise and commitment to providing the highest level of training possible. I see that Jerry, our head of education, has just tuned into the chat. Hello, Jerry. So great to see you, see you here with us. And Jerry's awesome. And just like Jerry and the rest of our team, uh, who is awesome, we are a global team of industry experts who are passionate about XR education. So just as our students, we come from all over the world and from all different backgrounds, uh, but we all have this mission in common. Yes, arms up, as Jerry's doing <laughs> the chat. So um, if you're somebody that's looking to get into XR, I mean, not only our team, but our students have extremely diverse and various backgrounds and objectives, as you'll see today. So it's, it's something that I always say, do not feel intimidated at all if you want to join this community and you don't feel like you're, you belong because it's really, um, there's space for everybody and anybody in it. This is a really cool snapshot of some of the companies and the students that we've had the pleasure to train. You can see that they come from really different sectors and, you know, some pretty big companies out there as well. So we have Facebook, YouTube, Nike, Just Do It, Apple, Hulu, um, as well as a couple of universities as well. And it's just really exciting to get all of these folks together. Oh, hey, Nakisa, hello. Victor Fernandez, Cervantes. Very great to see you all. Global awesomeness. I'm loving the comments. I'm loving it. All right, so what about the students that we are featuring today? So you will be seeing the amazing work of six students. Just And six is just a portion of the students that took the interaction design and prototyping for XR course at Circuit Stream. So this was a course that we launched in June. They represent the first cohort. So it's especially exciting to have them present today. So this course, it takes... Uh, it takes place over the course of 10 weeks and students have about 80 hours of instruction, live online instruction in the form of, you know, classes, office hours, and one on one meetings with experts, really a variety of ways of, of getting absorbing the content. And they learn how to design experiences for AR and VR and how that differentiates from, you know, web applications and all that good stuff. They learn techniques to create and test XR prototypes. 
They learn, you know, how you how you go about creating immersive storytelling and visual effects in XR. And just it's important today um, for you all to take a look at just the choices that they've made with regards to the interaction interface and overall user experience in XR. So this course doesn't involve any coding at all. So it's really about how they chose to set up that environment and that overall experience for the user. So that's something to look out to. Awesome. So we got, um, I think it's Dayan that's uh, that's tuning in through Circuit Stream. Uh, our Dijon, we have David. Hey, David. Brilliant. So great to see you all. And now, can I get a drum roll, please, in the audience? Without further ado, we are going to launch the student projects. And for our first student, we have the wonderful Vishali Razukar. Vishali did the Museum of Experiments. And um, a brief description is the virtual space where I display my recent VR learnings, my secret fault where I can exhibit my experiments and interactable artworks. So I'm going to bring Vishali up on stage. Hello, Vishali. How's it going? Hey, hello. Uh, well, hello from Rotterdam. It's going good. Excited to share my project, which is still a work in progress, I would say. But uh, I think hey, it's, it's good to get some feedback and uh, share what we have learned so far, because this is such a cool course. <laughs> Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. And just it's great to see you from all, you know, the other side of the world tuning in. What time is it there right now? It's 21.12. Wow. Okay. Perfect slip. <laughs> a trooper, a trooper. <laughs> Very nice. All right. So um, we have lots of encouraging emojis from uh, the audience. So without further ado, uh, sh shall we go to your slides? Uh, yeah, yes, please. Uh, well, maybe uh, if you go to the next slide, I, I would like to just give a brief introduction about myself and the intent of the project itself. Well, my name is Vaishali. I'm, uh, I'm a UX designer. And uh, why I wanted to take this course was for the fact that, you know, uh, well, the field of XR is super exciting for me as a designer, but also I've been finding my own creative ways to, to prototype these ideas. And eventually I knew that, okay, I have to get over that whole learning curve of, uh, of unity and really need to get my hands dirty in. And then I found this course and which I felt was something that would fit me because again, no code. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's it. that's what it was, and I would say the project itself kind of uh, has morphed into uh, a collection of my learnings in the space of XR itself. So if you go next, uh, Lucy, uh, essentially what I want to share today is the is my design process uh, that went into this project and the kind of decision journey that I had to take through. So when I started off, I wasn't really sure if it's going to be AR or VR experience. But essentially, uh, with my uh, with my one-to-one -one mentor, Raghav, we decided, okay, we have to go for VR because AR is something we have been doing quite a lot uh, already. Uh, and VR in Unity would be something, a great step to take forward. But what exactly in VR? If you go next, then that's where I had like two different ideas there. And when I, sp when I spoke about VR itself, I, as an interaction designer, I was trying to think about the the ideas, for instance, how exactly a tactile interactions can be brought into virtual um, space itself. So when I say tactile interactions, something that you can touch and feel, your everyday materials that you can get inspired from, uh, you know, uh, when you touch, grab, or pinch different kinds of objects. So how can I bring that in? It was a really wider scope, but then I had to kind of narrow it down. So what I really mean by that, if you go next, then in the mood board, hopefully, you, when I start collecting different inspirations, it's, it's essentially interactive wall that you would touch and then it will kind of behave with, uh, based on your gestures, essentially. So with this idea, uh, initially, um, we thought, okay, well, what if we, we go with the, with the idea of mesh deformation in Unity, which did not eventually work. So what I tried to do with my other learnings uh, in other softwares, for instance, Cinema 4D or Gravity and et cetera, et cetera, this was also to streamline my workflow. So I, I kind of took down one idea and tried, tried to prototype it into 3D program and then took it to Unity. So if you go next, what I really mean by that again is uh, I hope these videos will play on them on their own. So how exactly would this interactive wall look like uh, was something that I was trying to prototype again to give an idea also to my, to my mentor uh, about my vision itself. So again, uh, what kind of different deformers can be added? How exactly the gesture could 
could um, could react to a particular cell of that whole wall and things like that. I think they aren't working, but uh, I think they're you know, they're just loading. Yeah, yeah. We'll give them just a quick a second to. Yeah, so the so Vishali's main dem demo video won't go through won't go through these bufferings. Um, I, but... I think we can skip uh, skip next. It's, uh, right. Well, essentially, it's just about the process. And as I was saying, that you know, the whole idea about this uh, doing this project was also to amalgamate all of my learnings that I'm doing in VR itself. So it was really to create a space again, bringing all the learnings from the class. So I started working with the with the world space. And the, the exhibition space itself, I wanted to make sure it's open and uh, also closed uh, in closed space. And there is a series in uh, that I did in Gravity Sketch, which is called 36 Days of Thai, which I wanted to exhibit as well, or the sculpture that I made in, uh, in Adobe Medium. And of course, the learnings from Unity itself and the, the wall, the interactive wall itself, which is on the on the on the on the terrace of the of the museum. So yeah, I, I essentially you can probably uh, you can have a sneak peek in the, into the video that will Lucy will play next. And as I said, this is still a work in progress, but uh, I'm super happy that I could achieve. So I could come this far and work with materialization and uh, world making and adding those interactions in, in VR itself. Absolutely. No, and it's so amazing to see kind of your process. It gives us such an enriching experience of the final result. So shall we go to the video? Uh, yeah, sure. Brilliant. All right. And then we're going to open up to uh, questions. So prepare yourselves, audience. Amazing, amazing. Everybody give a round of snaps to Vishali. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think I also listed down some of the next steps that I would like to improve and uh, bring them into my next, uh, I would say, next stages of improvement. <laughs> Awesome. Would you like to um, talk? Uh, yeah, oh, sure. I thought I actually ran out of time. But yeah, uh, essentially, there, there were a couple of things that I 
that I figured out that, okay, the scale of the, the model itself, something that I can improve sense of presence is, is such a huge topic. So I'm still, still thinking about the fact that how exactly that I can bring in into this space. Um, and yeah, would like to continue experimenting with different uh, types of uh, interactive walls that's so that I can fill up the museum with new ideas and uh, yeah, uh, try out new interactions essentially. And materialization and lighting is, is, uh, is I would say, is a would be a cherry on the top. Awesome. Amazing. So uh, we're going to take uh, around one to two questions from the audience, and then we're going to invite Dima and Gabriele up on stage to give their feedback to Vishali. So audience, take us away with your brilliant questions. All right, so um, maybe what we'll do, maybe audience is still thinking they need some time. They're too blown away by your project, Vishali. <laughs> oh, okay, we got a question from Andrew. Never mind. All right, so Andrew's asking, um, let's bring it up on stage. Was that experience through Oculus Link or standalone? Uh, yeah, I was through Oculus Link because well, I personally use Mac and I had a lot of, lot of trouble getting that uh, working. So I had to switch to PC and then it was through links. I didn't really do the build on the uh, on the device itself yet. Uh, but yeah, this was really real time going uh, on through the link. So that's why probably there is a paper clip effect uh, in some uh, at some on some occasion. But uh, yeah, this probably was because of that. Brilliant. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and invite Dima and Gabrielli up on stage. So now saying, I feel you. Hello, Dima. Hello, Gabrielli. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Thanks for having us. Hi, Vishali. Um, it's great Hi, to have Dima. you with Hi, us. Gabriel. So you can just go ahead and, uh, well, first of all, we're so privileged to have Dima and Gabrielli with us. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Maybe Dima and Gabrielli, if you want to just see where you're tuning in from, and then you can fire away your feedback to Vishali. Sure. I'm actually, Vishali, not that far from you. I am in Leiden. Uh, so I think oh. it's uh, about <laughs> be 40 minutes away. Oh, that's super <laughs> great to hear. In yeah. the Netherlands as well, for who doesn't know. Okay. Oh. Lyman, of course. And uh, I'm popping in from uh, St. Petersburg. It's it's not that far away from where Gabriel Lee and Vishali is as, as well. I mean, comparing to Canada, it's uh, it's pretty yeah. near, almost a neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, re I really like this mix of uh, kind of uh, basically <clears throat> uh, this music making and uh, basically, yeah, the, the wall is interactive. You can uh, you get a sound from it and then you can change it. Uh, so it's basically like a an art sandbox, right? Where you can interact with the art and uh, then change it maybe in a way that uh, is unique. And uh, especially if, if it had more variety of sounds, I imagine someone, especially with musical kind of maybe training, could even make uh, a music with with it, right? Kind of make music and then and change it visually. Uh, so yeah, I think it's 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 definitely. Uh, can be explored further as even making it into a standalone kind of instrument even maybe so yeah, I really what like I it. Is that um, basically when you move away that's kind of like really the moment that you see what you have done right and that was one of the things that i was thinking so yeah. and also if someone explored it for the first time he might not know that by touching it that would be triggered right sure. so I don't know if uh, maybe having a ghost hand hinting, hey, there is something that might happen here. And maybe giving instead of hands, but a tool to browse mm -hmm. through the things. But then, of course, you lose that physicality that you wanted to convey, right? Because that's also one thing you want to have yeah. that touch. So it, it, it's tricky, but I like that you, you realize what it was when you step away and it's like, oh, wow, I kind of drew in a way, right? I interact with the wall, but I kind of made a drawing if, if you want. You wish so that was a uh, that was a nice concept but indeed someone passing by might just stop by and not even not even touch it it might break <laughs> sure. that could be something yeah, sure. nice. i i agree uh because i that was something i i realized that the scale of it i could not really 
understand where where maybe the positioning of it was was wrong or how do i really grasp the scale of it so you really see what you're doing is is yeah is getting affected right. and you're making something so yeah it's good point. i don't know if, for example close maybe making the pieces smaller if you make everything smaller i don't know then the polygons are count yeah. goes up or maybe you need to use some trick dima maybe could help with that uh, on, on how to how to get that effect because of course with such big pieces in that perspective it was tricky to see close by uh but yeah yeah I, I also like the, the, the navigation panel that you put like to help people okay here there is one thing here there is another thing so people kind of like also know what to expect uh in terms of okay if you go in this path if you go in this other path and now also the gallery remained open to some extent because you you got that that uh, opening in the ceilings uh so that was so that was also nice maybe just one question is what was the intent behind Right, so the the idea of exploring this kind of like touch to some extent is a face. Was that was there a need or a discovery from your side uh, that you wanted to have? Uh, well, it's something that came from my uh, I would say my design practice in itself uh, okay. because I've been uh, I've been at my day to day work I'm actually bridging physical and digital uh, inter interfaces or interactions. I'm talking about the knobs if it's okay. a really embedded GUI, so. I was thinking, okay, how can, is there a way that I can bridge it? And I was really ambitious in the beginning, trying to really have a physical surface and then that I could map in the VR and then I could actually see what's happening. That's how it kind of uh, uh, sprouted the whole. The but I like the evolution. I think there was a nice approach. Yeah. I think it's also the, the talent of scooping down something that is ambitious to something that's still conveying and was about also all the learning, right? It was not just about creating an effect simulation of that thing. It was to scale it down and bring all everything that you have learned in one project concise and manageable. So I think it was uh, it was actually a, a nice experimentation, especially knowing the story and the idea and uh, the process. That was really nice. Thank you for your feedback. Brilliant. Well, another round of of, uh, of snaps to Vishali. That was amazing. Yes. Thank you. Claps too. You know, we welcome or the sound, the wall sound. If I could have it here, you know, we would probably. <laughs> Domino here. I'm gonna get my sound to <laughs> <laughs> That was brilliant. Thank you, Gabrielle and Dima, for the feedback. Um, you know, uh, some people had some great questions in the chat, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna let you, Vishali, answer them there, or maybe in the in the post show discussion in VR. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to move you guys off the screen so that we can have our next set of presenter. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. So you can you can all see we've started with a bang. That was amazing. I love that. Definitely want to try that out. We're going to go next to a Jackie Farrell VR Cornhole. Play our cornhole game in VR. Choose your location, transport there, and play. And here we have Jackie's contact info if you'd like to um, connect with her on LinkedIn. So let's bring her up on here. Hello, Hi. Jackie. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Good. Um, how are you? Good. All right. Um, probably the easiest thing is maybe just to move ahead to the, as I set it up to the next slide. So um, this is just a, for anyone who doesn't know, probably a good place to start is um, uh, uh, that this is cornhole. If you're wondering what it is, it's the two um, wooden boxes where you actually throw a bag into the hole and that's kind of sets up what, what my project is. I should start off also by saying my background is not in design or, or anything like that, it's in marketing but was interested in learning more about the AR VR experience. And so I uh, took this course, thought it would be a good introduction where there wasn't a lot of heavy coding. It got to um, learn more about the user experience and, and design, which I had some familiarity with from working in the marketing space with, with other types of designers. So I thought there was some, that was a good uh, stepping off point, so to speak. Um, Absolutely. So when we say that you can come from any areas, it's true, right? It, it doesn't it, mean it's going to be a piece of cake, but you can do some great stuff, right? You, you can, and it was definitely, the course is really, the course is great, lots to, you can, for me, it was basically uh, coming up with a concept that was kind of fun, and this is what I picked, um, and trying to apply the concepts we were learning in the class, I picked a VR project, um, and then try to build a basic prototype just to get an understanding overall. So yeah, and, and the, the coursework and the one-on-ones were great to, to help with that, and we can, pop along to the next slide and I'll take you through my project. Awesome. 
So I started with the the one on ones, uh, came up with the VR cornhole and and started off with just what the concept would be. And that's where we started before we narrowed down what the prototype would focus on. The idea was just to like uh, enter a waiting room and you could select, is it a single player game for, for VR or would it be a multiplayer game? Would you want, what location would I want to go? And I want to play it someplace fun, you know, like a beach, a park, and I, I suppose you could put it anywhere. But like, so the idea would be to pick the player, pick the location, and then press a button and, and get to that location and arrive there and your cornhole is all set up and you can play. So obviously big, concept, big, big scope. So um, we were narrowed in on what area we would focus in on and probably most, um, you know, seems kind of obvious because we're doing cornhole that we would focus in on picking a location, start with a simpler concept of a single player versus a multiplayer, and then, you know, set the, set the cornhole board up, get the bags and, and work on the throwing and scoring and just some of the logistics. So a little bit of a tease there is I, you know, I took the course, I thought, oh, this won't be a lot of heavy coding and it probably isn't. But for me, this forced me to sort of jump in a little bit and, you know, uh, sort of dip my toe in a little bit of coding and had a lot of patience with um, my one-on-one -on -one instructor, uh, Raghav, who was, who did, who was really super helpful to do that. So I'll flip it ahead to the next and give you a little, um, just a brief outline of, uh, I concepted out some storyboards just to help me kind of on the whole plan and then what it would be just like how it would set up and we were focused in on the, uh, the obviously the beach setting was where we picked, play the cornhole game there. And it kind of just gave me a little visual or step-by-step -step to help me think through as I was new to this as to how I would do it and help the conversation with within the one-on-ones to move forward. And we can skip ahead to, um, to the next one and get into a little bit to the concept. So uh, within you need created a beach location where you'd be playing the game. So uh, this just kind of shows some screenshots where created a scoring system. So you would made it very simple, uh, you know, three points for hitting the board and, and one point for, for uh, at one point for hitting the board, three points for going through the hole. Um, came up with a system where, how do I get the bags that I'm gonna throw and decided since we're at the beach, we would make them starfish shaped, a little fun. For the for the user um and then talked a little bit about like well how are you going to get the bet like what if you throw a few how are you going to keep it going so also came you know talk through the concept of maybe having something where they just you can push a button they keep coming and you're never going to run out you could play forever um and then ha also came up with a little bit of a guide of where do i stand so put a little bit of line there place the the uh the cornhole bags and the buttons nearby so you could just reach down and grab them and throw them along and that was the the basic concept just to work out for the prototype and if we skip ahead to the next slide i think it just kind of shows just a little video of how we you know um where we first get into a little bit of the coding of hitting the board is the one one point and then through the uh the bag is the is the three points so just that was the concept basic concept of how you would score and and begin to play the game um, and then I, just to keep us moving, uh, we can jump ahead. So what you're going to see in the prototype that, that Lucy's going to share in a minute on the video is the solo player, the beach, set up the board, uh, just kind of throwing the bags to the board. Um, and also just for logistics for folks, um, the, uh, the hand controller, you kind of press that button and you bring it back and you release to throw the bag. And I will say, you know, that was took me a few minutes to, to, to kind of get the, the groove on that. Um, and I and, and thinking about it as we watch the video too, I think probably if you were gonna iterate on this, you know, it might be nice to be able for the player to adjust the, the board and the, the distance a little bit for an easier user experience for everyone, but, but that's not here. And uh, that's it, we can jump right into the, to the Brilliant. video. Brilliant, let's do it.
All right, there we go. A round of snaps to Jackie. Brilliant. So I'm not sure, um, are you are you all getting a, a bit of a lag on your end as well on the videos, or is that just me? I have a little bit of a lag watching it, but I don't know if anyone, uh, but not bad. Yeah, I'll see if anybody in the audience uh, went through the same thing. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just put on the video a little bit earlier, let it load a bit. Yeah, so Andrew's seeing a tiny bit. All right. So I'll try to do that for the next videos. My apologies. So let's, uh, does any, do we have any audience questions? Okay, so Louise is asking, is the music just on the video or is it in the game too? The, the music is not in the game. Just put the music onto the video to, to add a little interest. So as you watch me throw starfish, you know, there's a little bit of noise around. <laughs> Nice. I mean, there could be, I think that would be a further iteration of adding some sound like the, the bag hitting the board, maybe some sounds of the beach. I think that would probably be a nice addition that just, you know, to the whole environment, but not, not enough time to scope that out here. Yeah, that would be a really nice while well, sounds of the beach, really, really relaxing, really can take you there. Very nice. All righty. Um, and I know somebody was asking before. Oh, okay. Andrew's asking. What inspired the design of the cute bags? Um, I, you know, I was doing, I was trying to get to do some research of what what I could, what we could have to throw, what what type of bag, like what would that be? Would it, is there a bag out there? Would, it, would you have to create something? And so I was looking at beach environment things and I thought, oh, it would probably a good concept for it if you went to all different environments as each one might have different style bags that fit the environment. So that's kind of how I came up with some. Um, I was like, let's see if we can find a starfish to throw and uh, stumbled upon those really cute, they were kind of cute and had a round, round enough a shape that you could throw it so that's that's um that's how that's it, it. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> no. no super cute i love it um and then oh where uh two two quick last questions what's your personal high score sonia's asking oh i i, I haven't fully scored i i i I have, don't have one yet. I, I just uh, was throwing for practice, really. Need <laughs> uh, to do a, a competition then. I'm a competition. Sure. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Um, and where are you looking to go from here? Um, well, um, I mean, I think it to, you know, obviously I think it would be great to spend some time. I think I would like to, from here, jump in a little bit to the, to the short coding class that comes next. Just, um, I didn't sharp. have time to do that, the C sharp, right? Uh, cause I think for this type of thing, having a little more baseline knowledge, there would be great. And, and building out the experience, as I said, with maybe some more sound, um, you know, making some, some adjustments to, to the throwing and the, and the board. Um, and then playing around with potentially that concept of like, you know, teleporting into the environment, how that would that would look, maybe having some instructions as to how the game worked, um, that kind of thing. So, so, but I think from a progression point of view, it's the coding that, that it became clear that that would be super helpful to have some background in that going forward. Nice, perfect. Well, C Sharp is gonna be great for that, I'm sure. Oh, sorry. That was a mistake, but yeah, they were cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's bring Dima and Gabrielli up on stage. Jackie, really nice. I mean, uh, honestly, uh, I think it's incredible what, what 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 ended up doing. It seems like complicated from the outside, but, and and it, it is to set up such a scene like that. Especially, I mean, I I, I can imagine. I always end up wanting to create something, and then I stop always at three D modeling because okay. Fine. Uh, they are just there. It's fine for me. But making it interactive, be able to move. Also, for example, it seems a small thing, but the fact that the, the starfish had physics and they didn't overlap with each other and it was sliding, it, it was just like a hint. Hey, th this, these are these are real. You can grab them. So that was a, a good uh, a good hint uh, as well. Uh, and the game is also it, it, it's VR native, uh, so you you wouldn't create such a game for just a PC or a phone. Uh, you, it's 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 fun to throw stuff around in, in VR. It's very fun, and uh, um, so yeah, uh, like as, and for example, it's one thing that came to my mind when I was watching the video that I remember that it's also fun to break things. I remember we had a game with like a stack of uh, plates, and it was very very fun to just take a plate and throw it, uh, in, you know, in in the sink. And if it do, if it misses the sink, it would like fall on the floor and break. And actually, actually, it's pretty simple to make breakable things. You just model, uh, you just you you, you just break uh, that model in the editor, 
and then kind of in in, in unity you can ap apply physics and make the pieces kind of fall apart so you, you don't have to apply any like complicated algorithms to to break things apart in real time you can just bake it somewhere and yeah it's, it's super fun and we, we also in, in shapes we have a deletion by throwing away and uh, people who discover that you, you can delete stuff by just throwing away uh it seems that they they like it yes. yeah everybody does everybody yeah. does all of our yeah, students have tried it love it yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, maybe you could break shells or something like that's a pretty breakable thing at the beach right th there it is yeah yeah or, or the bag that when it doesn't hit the board it could fall and break into a shell or something <laughs> Yeah, and especially you, you you also notice uh, stuff like when when something hits the floor or or surface if it if it has a sound it's especially you notice that in VR especially and if it has a satisfying sound it it's great so in in case of breakable plate it was awesome to hear them break and I imagine this bug if it has a kind of sound that you know you uh, you apply when when it hits a surface uh, that that is kind of adds to immersion. One question, I, one question I had is that. I've seen that the button was on the left side, right? So that was mm. that button that was on the left side, and it felt it was a bit low. Was there a reason for? Because of course, so there is a bit of inclusiveness, right? So you can say, okay, right. majority of people are right-handed. I'll put the button. I would say in the right because I'm pointing the right. It's pointing on the right. I grab it with the right, and then I throw it. Maybe throw it in the middle so that you get it, and, and then it spawns, and everybody decides what to push. But we tend to push it. That's a great I'm idea. Sure yeah. why decided, why, there was a specific reason why I decided to put it on the left so that I have to kind of like cross like this to do it. Or um, was just... There really wasn't. I was actually using my my left hand to to to, to do some of it. Um, but right. but okay. uh, so I didn't. But that's a great. Yeah, that is a great idea because some people might uh, to make that in as the next generation to make it easier to press the button. So there's not a lot of you know switching or figuring it out. That's that's a great point actually. Yeah. Another thing was also wondering, uh, I mean, of course, that's when it gets harder, when things also get harder. So I'm not sure again, because I might say, oh, but you could do this, you could do that. And it's super right. Cool. But one point was uh, some sort of feedback when you score, right? I don't know if some particles or something that say, hey, you you made it. And because I also couldn't see uh, the, the, the scoreboard changing. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. And I'm the it, it wasn't for some reason it does on the unity but that when i did the video i noticed it didn't and i just did, okay. was not able to remake it but yeah but that's a great idea like if it went in the hole to have something that was like you know Water yeah that's a really rainbow. nice idea like yeah. dolphins coming out and spraying <laughs> whatever you think is best you know but in general it's, it's anyway with the interaction right whenever you do things you always want to get some sort of feedback if you have if, is, was it okay was it not so in that case it's like uh that, that that's something that i think could be could be nice and uh, i suppose also not super hard to add uh, it, because it could be minimal right it's still a concept it doesn't have to be a sophisticated simulation yep great thank you that those are great ideas Awesome, nice job, Jackie. Thank you, Gabriele and Diva. Well all right, uh, congratulations to you all. I'm gonna take you guys off the stage now. And let's go next. We have our lovely Martin Schott. I'm gonna bring Martin up on here. Hey, Martin. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Schott. I'm a Swiss living in New York City. I have a creative director background. Last year during the pandemic, when the art world shut down and so as many arts institution uh, as Lincoln Center, where I used to work and Christie's before that, um, I really paid attention to how the art world would deal with the pandemic. And I observed how art galleries and art fairs uh, showed case their content, you know, in virtual rooms and so forth. At that time, I was also introduced to Stephen Sebring and Daniel De Palma, who you know made me aware of Unity software and all the magic that you create with it. And together, we pitched arts organization this you know technology. Um, what finally made me commit to the Circuit Stream program was really a personal project. Um, I lost a very dear friend of mine seven years ago. Uh, 25 years ago, we moved to New York City right after design college. Um, 
He went on to become an art director for Sony Music, working with Destiny's Child, Maria Carey, Ricky Martin, wow. doing their covers, and finally getting a Grammy for Johnny Cash packaging. At the height of his design career, he retired from design and focused on photography. He was always an artist. He created a series, The Games People Play, which showcases an apocalyptic world and how you know life looks like. It's really a haunting series, and it was never exhibited. In fact, none of his art was ever in a gallery. Uh, his friends and I, we always talked about making an exhibition. Years later, I thought, hey, I can do this in virtual reality and give people access around the world, wherever they are, headset or on desktop to experience it. And before we dive into the video, I like to give his brother, Alex, who might be watching from Mexico City, a shout out. And also my sister, she might be watching from Switzerland. And thank you for Tyrell, my teacher, my one-on-one -on -one Aussie, the incredible staff in the office rooms, Indica, Cash, Lovester, and Lucy for always connecting the dots, <laughs> and Stefan, who got me into this course. So let's roll the clip. Let's roll the clip. And I'll be talking about the challenges after the clip. Sounds good. So to bring, <laughs> to bring the vision to life uh, that fitted the art, which has a bit of a somber and dark feel, I was looking for a somewhat raw space, almost like a brutalist architecture, which I found in a prefab. And then I added a skybox that was more of a sunset-like and added an audio clip, which was a little bit more slightly eerie and just to get you in the right mood. Once I deployed the first build on the Oculus, I was just floored, standing in the creation. I always have an envy of architects because they build and then they stand inside the creations and then they feel. I never got that from 2D design and now I, I was experienced that. But I saw the challenges. I had Z flippers on the reflective surfaces that are supposed to be synonymous of acrylic. Um, I had to fix that with adjusting the depth from the wall. Um, there was also the fact of, oh, I'm, I'm walking through walls. I'm walking outside my build, so I had to set up uh, colliders. Um, once I've you know, um, troubleshot all my issues, I then wanted to take it also into a WebGL um, environment for people that don't have an Oculus can experience it that way. So. Cash sent me almost in like a VIP tutorial through that in one of the office uh, sessions. And with a, with a little bit of tinkering and additional code from YouTube and the Amazon AWS site, I was able to host the files and then implement it into a Squarespace site. So when you click on my uh, website in the next slide, you can go to it in the VR section and navigate. Use Firefox or Chrome. Um, however, WebGL, I needed to also set up a first-person interactor, and the interactor always dropped through the floor, and there were issues again, and then Indica helped me with that. Um, the longer you are with the project, you want to add more things. So I wanted to add benches, but then you don't see the reflection everywhere, so new re reflective probes. I mean. So the next steps for this project, I see I'd like to add additional rooms with different areas of Ian's art. And 
ultimately have an app of it, but I know Oculus is very strict with the uh, you know, admission protocol. Hopefully there are other app platforms. And at least I want to do a website destinations where I can host uh, WebGL files. And I look forward to Gabriele and Dima's feedback. And That's everyone, brilliant. thank you everybody. No, that's brilliant, Martin. Um, round of applause of snaps, everything. And just, I think especially uh, it, it's so exciting to see, I mean, all, all these projects, but um, particularly when you when you create something that has such a strong personal connection. I, it, I, I mean, it was thrilling for us to see it just here without being inside of the app itself. I can't even imagine you know, how powerful it was for you. So I'm so glad that you went ahead and did it. Uh, so we have, well, I'll just take two questions from the audience. Uh, let's see. So we had from Andrew, can you explain the importance of the red object in the space? <laughs> Andrew, he always asks the right questions. <laughs> uh, he was in my class with Tyrell. Um, yeah, the, the red object in the space, uh, it, it came random because I, I realized I wanted a space where you move around freely, less so indicated teleporting, so more of organic feel, and hence there is not much interactions. You know, I could introduce a guest book for people to pick up and sign, but how would that translate to WebGL? So the red or object to answer your question is random. Um, it relates to an object in one of the in a few of the photos that is featured. Okay, so that's just a nice reference there. Brilliant. So I'm going to go ahead. Somebody asked about your website, so we have it here. I'm going to bring in uh, Gabrielle and Dima for feedback. Hey, guys. Hello, uh, Martin. Very nice. Hi, Martin. Uh, Thank you. Nowadays, there are a lot of galleries around uh, because people are starting to show their NFT and to try to uh, create and, and, and to show their piece. And I, I really like that there were a lot of elements that I, I really loved. So the 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 music the ambient was really nice and one thing that i really liked was how the ceiling was broken just on top of some of the uh, of some of the artwork right in the center so you could kind of like approach and when you approach you start seeing the sky like if it's something that is opening up to you in a way so i really love i really love that concept and i you know i, I kind of like when thinking at that cone in the middle i felt like that also people when, when they create this gallery, they just make those the snap, those those two D images on top, and they're like, okay, this is my my gallery because that's how it is in the real world. And for me, that kind of like felt like, okay, you are you are a bit of part of this art. Look, the the same object that is in that painting is now here and makes you think. So, is is it the art just the one that is on the wall, or is it just part of me? So th that was the thing because, and it can also a little bit provocative. I, I would have I would have thought uh, personally. I, I really I do have a question. Yeah. Why the the, the painting was were reflective? It, it's not a bad or good. It's just I was curious why why you made that reflective, because you could also see the others at the same time. Was there a reason? That's so cool. Thanks for that question. You know, for me personally, I have a preference when mounting photography. I, I, I really respond well to photographs just floating on the wall with just like acrylic glass, and I felt like I've seen enough in uh, virtual rooms where works just appear 2D. And that gave it right. a four-dimensional feel without having to have a frame. And I, I feel like the reflection helps to respond to the space, yet makes it more challenging with the reflection probes to right. Right. have the proper uh, perspective. Of them, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Because one thing also I've seen people doing is that baking the lights of the environment in, in some of the, the elements, in the sculpture or in the picture, that also creates that feeling of popping up that is just not an image on there. So maybe for another room, right, if you might think about adding lights, you can also use that to create that detachment, the feeling of space 3D uh, and, and, and floating that you might, might want. That could be something to think. That, that's a great idea. Thank you. And on my end, uh, I had uh, two thoughts slash ideas. The first one, uh, w when I saw that uh, that uh, red shape um, in space, I instantly remembered th this guy uh, named uh, Martin Nibelung. So what he does is he has a hobby where he uh, he gets inspired by art pieces 
and recreates them in 3D in using uh, Dreams uh, uh, on, on, on PlayStation. And not for the sake of gimmicky, he, he actually adds some life and atmosphere. And I, I recommend to check him out as maybe as an idea to maybe collaborate with an artist who can recreate some parts of the art pieces uh, in that uh, shared space to kind of uh, basically bring some of the stuff from art pieces uh, in, 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 in your 3D space. Maybe that can add to immersion, uh, immersion and then uh, kind of help people to... Um, and uh, another thing is to, uh, about distribution of the, those uh, of this gallery. Uh, maybe there is a way to collaborate with, say, uh, say there is an upcoming Facebook horizon, right? If they have uh, import of images, maybe you could create, recreate this uh, gallery uh, in uh, Horizon and then add music, and it will be easier to invite people and also have basically uh, have visitors like vi visiting, and you can experience that together with someone. Or and and there is a project, uh, uh, basically virtual uh, museum in virtual reality, and they have variety of art pieces created by different artists. Um, like made with tilt uh, brush and uh, Oculus Medium and other stuff. And I, I think they may, might be also looking for collaborators to add it kind of a room with, with those art pieces. So I will just send the link just in case uh, to those That's uh, awesome. people. I need to check to that those out. Project. Thank you. Oh, and one thing yeah. is like footsteps. Because that's yeah. one thing. That... Did you hear them? I didn't. They were no, they actually in it, and, and I wanted to delete them. Or maybe in some build they got no. deleted. Do you, you do like don't, a don't don't keep, keep them. them. Okay. <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, yeah, and one thing I noticed from that is that uh, with art, uh, virtual art galleries, it can be so simple to just say, "Oh, it's just a place where everybody can access it." You know, given the restrictions of, in the pandemic. But the cool thing about virtual art galleries, you can curate the space itself to converse with the artwork as well, right? So I thought that was really interesting how you had the, this idea of, you know, the artwork is in not just the artwork itself, but it's also in the space, it's also in the reflection. So everything, it's also in the, how, the space itself. So I thought that was a really interesting, you know, potential in VR. Anyways, just throwing in there my, my two cents, but um, that was amazing. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. All right, so next we have, uh, let's see, let's bring up the presentation on here. This is Martin's contact if anybody would like to contact him. And now we have Maxime, the spy's little helper. So my project is inspired by spy movies, games such as I Expect You to Die and Job Simulator with a twist. You're the one sitting in the van gathering the intels the spies need to accomplish their mission. The gameplay ranges from taking pictures of suspects to hacking IT video systems and planting bugs in the server room. Brilliant. Let's get Maxime up on here. Hello, Maxime. Oh, you're muted. Let me see if I can unmute you. Yeah, there I was go. muted. <laughs> <laughs> so hello, uh, I'm Maxime. I'm a, f a web developer from uh, Switzerland. So I have a little background in UX, and I was really curious on how it's uh, translated in uh, VR. And I had already uh, an ID, a data ID, uh, before uh, joining the uh, course. So it was the occasion to ask questions and see uh, how it's done, uh, and how it should be done, and how the interactions are working in VR compared to uh, a normal 3D uh, video game. So you can go to the next slide. I have a black ah, screen. Yes, <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Let me add it to there. <laughs> there we go. So you can. Uh, so uh, the idea was the in in most uh, movies we often see in spy movies. So we see there's they have a preparation phase where they will. Uh, take picture of where they have to go and uh, set up uh, bugs in the um, in the place they will go or hack system. And I always find it really uh, interesting. And I wanted to create a game using those uh, premises. And so yeah, you can skip to the next. So uh, with Ragav, we created a mood board 
So uh, there are some pictures of the movie Sneakers. And then also I wanted to feel uh, retro, uh, retro vibes, so really uh, huge buttons and old school uh, device uh, like we can see in the pictures. <laughs> so yeah, so one of the issue I had uh, in most of the prototypes I made was with the uh, level design. So most often I would use uh, assets and put them uh, together and it end up with, uh, I ended up with a level that had no uh, intention and no, it, it felt empty. So we discussed about how to create a compelling level. So uh, what's the idea behind the level? What does the player know beforehand? And uh, does he know what's his mission? What are the possible interaction? And uh, one important thing also was the uh, scale of the level because uh, some of the first level I made were really huge. So it would take like five minutes just to reach the first point. So <laughs> that was a, a really uh, nice hint. And um, so there's also various interaction. Uh, so hide behind walls and that kind of stuff. And also what he pointed to me was to uh, when creating a level in a building or even an outside area, is to actually use blueprints like we can see in the picture and just add uh, weapons to have an idea of what it would uh, feel like. And uh, that was a great help for, um, for future levels I will uh, create. So that was really cool. And we discussed really about the, uh, the um, immersion of the player inside a level. So you can go to the next uh, slide. And we end up with that kind of uh, structure. So we have the start, which gives uh, the meaning to the level. So the player has his mission. He must go through uh, the level to accomplish something. Then we have a build up where he will go through the level and interact with a few stuff. Then, for example, if it was the level where he needs to plant the bug, after that, there would be an alert and all the guards will start to run around. So it, it would really have to hide uh, way more than at the start. And then there's the resolution where he reached the end of the level and uh, he feels like he accomplished something and the stress is decreased or he still has a small rush of adrenaline. <laughs> nice. So uh, in summary of what I uh, took from the design course was to uh, first use blocks instead of going with assets directly because it can get really messy and ProBuilder is a good tool to do it. Then use real example of blueprints or existing buildings to create uh, a level to have the good proportions. Also that the level needs, uh, like there's a story behind each level. It's not just uh, a bunch of uh, blocks or assets putting together. So there's really uh, a set, an emotion that must come out. And then also that in VR, we can uh, teach some game mechanics just by using the environment. So like we will see in the video, when you approach near the, so for example, sockets, you can display a hint that you can interact with it. In the video, it will not be uh, levels. It's more about uh, being inside the van and interact with some uh, objects that are uh, available to the player to accomplish uh, his missions. Cool. So ready for the video then? <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, let's hit it.
Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. So yeah, there's still some uh, issues with the circuits for the pictures, but uh, yeah, still a working project. And yeah, the idea is to continue on that uh, game and then put it so I saw that on the Oculus, there's the Oculus Lab where you can uh, let deploy uh, an alpha version that way people can play and give some feedbacks and uh, hopefully someday it's really on the Oculus store. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know Diva and Gabriel will, will have a lot um, to say about that. So one question from the chat, and we'll go to Diva and Gabriele. Sandy's asking, is that entire map playable, open world? Yeah, uh, so the idea is um, there will be some uh, hotspots on the map where you can use the blue pin to uh, indicate to the truck that you want to go there. And the idea is that sometime the Waldo you need to find if you get too late there, he will move to another place and uh, you will see him travel and you, yeah, you will have to uh, catch up with him. But yeah, there will be various hotspots on the map and sometimes new spots will appear with specific uh, new types of mission, like for example, entering a building or that kind of stuff. Nice, awesome. All right, so Diva and Gabriele, take it away. Dima, I started before, so you want to go first this time? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, the uh, I, you have lots of great mechanics, uh, and uh, like starting with that, you have gadgets all around. It's very physical. You you go to the to gadget, you get it in your hand, like this camera with the zoom. I mean, it it feels fun. It looks like a fun game. Uh, that the fact that you are in the van, you can move on the map. Uh, I mean, it, it looks great, uh, and. Um, yeah, and being being sneaky in VR is is also fun. So yeah, I wonder uh, like what what th thoughts do you have or uh, maybe already planned? What type of mechanics do you plan in terms of like are you going to be sneaky? Uh, are there some people or someone who watches you and you have to be careful? Yes, so uh, there will be uh, like guards that have mm -hmm. uh, a state so they're either idle or patrolling. And when they see you, they first go in mode in a search area. So it spawns mm -hmm. various points and they check those points. And if they find you, it's uh, they go in alert mode and there they will follow you actively. And if they reach you, it's I don't know yet if it's game over or if it's just uh, you lost the mission. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and uh, I was uh, Aline. I hesitated between uh, teleportation or uh, the continuous movement, but I think teleportation is uh, less uh, sickness prone. Um, mm -hmm. I, mean, I know that some people are easy, more, uh, they can get easier, the motion sickness easier. So, yeah. And yet, like I quickly mentioned, there will be hotspots on the map, so you can hide uh, near a wall. Mm -hmm or go inside the cabinet to avoid being detected. That's pretty cool. I think nice. your collaborator wants to And maybe you should have things. a cat. Maybe you should have a cat in the game as well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, for example, if you could grab object from afar, it makes a lot of sense. And I also see this also being very interesting, actually, a room scale. So where you could have those objects and gadgets potentially arranged within the room without the need to teleport. So you yep. really feel like you are in a van. So yeah. I didn't get actually that you could actually move between spots using the map. That was brilliant because you are always in the same thing. You're always in the same spot. And you can change the environment. You can change all the things around. Still feeling. And also in the future, uh, you can also add the, the customization to your van, right? And, and maybe your own. So there is a lot of opportunities there. Uh, I, I think I like it. And, Mostly the, the different game mechanics and all these things going on it really feels uh, organic. Yeah, uh, I really like it. It was, uh, it was a nice concept. Thank you. Amazing. Congrats, Maxime. Thank you, Thank Gabriele you. and Dima. Definitely. Well, you know, you, you have lots of players for all of them. Yeah, for sure. Here, right? and, uh, so, <laughs> anybody it's my would pleasure like to share it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. So, Thanks. we have next. Let me bring, next we have Alejandro Perez, VR server hack game. So teleport, dodge, shoot, and kill, grab lives, continue shooting, see your life stats, grab your gun, explore, reach to the end. 
So let's bring Alejandro up here. <laughs> Did you like my intro, Alejandro? Hi, yes. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to show what I did for the course. I enjoyed building that a lot. Uh, well, I'm from Colombia, and I am, um, today I work for Globe, a software company that is in Latin America, uh, with branch offices around the world. I am a global, a global game specialist, currently working in leading VR projects. Um, okay, I, I decided to take this course since I already do something from the development side but wanted to understand the different aspects that are needed to design a good experience for the players, something that is totally different if you compare it with developing games for PC or console. And of course, Maxine, when you when when he uh, showed the, the game that he did, demonstrates that, uh, of course. It's it's completely different of making a, a, a game with, with controller pads or something like that. With VR, it's totally different. And I wanted to, to learn more about that. And as you will see in video, my project is a VR shooter pixel art nostalgic game. <laughs> I feel I, I like all the pixel art um, and all of these kind of retro games. I had a Super Nintendo. I'm still having it. I'm still playing games in it. So I totally love that kind of art for the games. Um, and in this game, um, you have to you have to explore the world with a gun in hand, accumulate score while you are killing monsters and try to reach to the end in less than 10 minutes. Um, during the game, you will find some live pickups and all the stuff and secret doors to explore new areas. Um, and as you will see, the scenario emulates like a software scenario of a server, like you are exploring inside the server, an enemy server, and you have to uh, enter there and, and simulating that you are like a program. And obviously my inspiration is a 90 series that I had, that I watched when I was a kid. And it was called Reboot. I don't know if anyone in the audience uh, saw that. Um, the Reboot, uh, where I, there are a lot of characters inside a server and where it's a game loaded into there, you, they have to go inside the game and try to uh, beat the user. So it's kind of like, like that. So yes, uh, now, so let's roll the clip and then I can mention about the challenges I have building this game because it was a lot of challenges. Uh, yeah, I believe that Lucy disappeared. <laughs> okay, but you see Lucy there? I don't see her either. You want me? I can uh, mention the like the the challenges that I have with with the game. Um, we can talk about that. Um, okay, what what game do you play the most on this NES? Mortal Kombat Ultimate <laughs> was my favorite game. On that, in fact, I'm 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 still playing it uh, nowadays. So yeah, Hello, I, I everyone. see you Yes, I just you know just to keep things interesting, get that adrenaline <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that, everyone. My computer start decided to freeze. So there you go. 
All right. So <laughs> let's get Alejandro's uh, brilliant project up on there. Hopefully okay. I didn't miss much. Okay, yes, uh, the, the, the roll the clip and yeah, we can continue talking up uh, after that if Perfect. you want. Yep. Should be up in a minute. Awesome. I know I'm so, I was like on the edge of my seat. Ah, <laughs> that's great. All right. Do we have any questions from the, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Alejandro. You have some uh, thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very quick. Um, I wanted to mention that um, a great challenge that I have here for me was uh, to put things in the right place. Um, I had to do it a lot uh, from the perspective point of view. On all the level, I had to do a lot of testing to check this. For example, how much player could crouch in order to dodge some of the projectiles. Uh, and in the, on the instructions screens, I also wanted to the, the player to start interacting with different elements instead of having like uh, uh, only text. Uh, I wanted to, to the player to to start uh, interacting with the stuff there. Also, another challenge was the code. Uh, I made a little bit of code, but. Um, Coding the enemies to make them interesting was very, very painful. Uh, but yeah, uh, I believe that it could. I, I made a good work on, on that. Uh, it's, it's still in progress. I could make it better. And yes, that's it. Uh, this, the art and the sounds are not mine. Are all of them downloaded from the internet? So yeah, I'm not that artistic. I don't have that artistic part of my, <laughs> in my in my skills. And yeah, that's it. Amazing, great, but the retro food was definitely super cool. And none of these projects, right, it's so hard to get a, a, a perfect finished project, but it, everything is always in progress and there's always something we could work on, right? So, Gabriele and Dima, take it away. 
Absolutely. I mean, and I, I like the crescendo of the music, right? You, you, you feel that it's, it's going. And, uh, and one question that I had was, is, is the user or the player aware of a timer? So how does he know? Is, is, there, is, is there a time limit? Is there a score? Or does he lose it only when he gets hit and dies? Uh, I mean, how, how did you envision that? Yeah, I, I put like in the when you press the thumbstick there, the left thumbstick up, you will see the ray. So you can teleport with that ray. And also there is an, a UI display there above the, right. the, the sphere hand. There uh, you can see your score, the time that is left, and your health. Uh, what is okay, what, so what health. Timer there? Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah. continuously going now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, the, the one thing is that um, at the beginning, the instruction, you, did, you see that there was that white on white. Uh, that's something that, of course, when, when you were in, the, in there, probably you, 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 you have noticed that that is also uh, yeah. uh, tricky. But it's not that readable, that part of the, of the instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I really like the concept. And I think, I think uh, if that UI was something, maybe it was on the arm or something like that, that would have maybe felt, of course, maybe a bit cramped. So I don't know how, how that could have been done, but uh, but making it part of the environment, not looking like a UI, but like an information that it's somehow part of the player equipment of some sort. Maybe as a helmet, some people have done a helmet and it looks like it's, it's an information that is part of this helmet. But maybe I don't know if it would fit with your setting, because of course that was that vibe. Um, yeah, I was a little bit scared about if, if I if I put in the like in the canvas or something like that. I was scared to make the player to have motion sickness. That's mm. that's why I I was totally afraid with, the, with that because I I, I I had motion sickness very easy. <laughs> uh, so that's why I I decided to put that in the in in the hand. Um, but yeah, yeah, of course I can explore more more options because it was the the, the design challenge, the more difficult challenge that I have from the design point of view over this game. Yeah, I think UI in VR is very tricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, being in uh, retro, in, uh, like retro world, uh, like pixel art in VR uh, is tricky in a good way. And I remember played two games, like one was like Wolf Wolfstein inspired and another is Doom probably. Uh, in, in totally different uh, art style, more green, like green and serious. Uh, but I remember I felt more immersed than in some games that strive for photorealism because you kind of accept that, okay, I'm this retro like character, pixel, pixelated character, I fight this monster, here I am, and you kind of, at least I felt m more immersed in, in that uh, setting. And uh, so I think, like, just as a comment, maybe having uh, an arca arcade-like uh, uh, gameplay uh, could benefit uh, that in, in that it could be shorter play session. And uh, you, so you go for say like 10 minutes of very intense gameplay, like maybe brutal even, and then uh, like very thrilling and that is it. And that even uh, I think could work uh, as really like a real arcade, arcade game, you know, where, I mean, now it's not as, uh, not that uh, I guess, uh, Popular with COVID, but after that, I, mean, uh, I, I guess some some people will play arcade as well. So having that short gameplay sessions could benefit. I don't know if uh, what, what you planned uh, about the gameplay uh, duration, but that was one thing that uh, came to my mind. Yeah, uh, with with my mentor, so it was Lobster. We we decided that ten minutes could be good in order to have a complete experience because having mm -hmm. that shorter could be like okay, I I, I want more. Uh, probably mm -hmm. ten minutes could be. Could be a length that could be the, the the right length of the game, and also I had to to do like a level, uh, a, a a bigger level to to match that time because as you mm -hmm. can see, well, uh, in the video it was a little bit fast forward the, the video, but normally I could play the game in five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So so yeah, yeah, balancing that with with the time and the uh, the length of, length of the of the level that it was also a challenge to build the the level uh, is something that I could work a little bit more on the next version of the game. Mm -hmm. And you could sell like coins as NFTs and people can play that game only by buying that <laughs> coin and kind of injecting that in, into the blockchain nice. of your arcade. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Very, very yeah. trendy. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, congrats, Alejandro. That was awesome. Okay. Thank you, Demon okay. Gabriele. And okay. uh, so now we have, last but not least, to close off the presentations, we have a Jacob Visor with us. Let me go ahead and just put on. Oh, one Hello. second here. Hello. Hey. Hello, Jacob. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing good. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear and see you. Okay, so I wanted to preface this by saying that my project is in still in the development phases. And, you know, my journey with Circus Stream has kind of helped this project get to where it is right now. It's more of an exponential curve than a linear curve when, in terms of uh, how my, you know, my program progresses. And so the premise of this uh, program is on history. And I was basically at an impasse with my career at the start of the pandemic. And then I thought of having a different outlook more creatively. And so I decided to go into game development. And so that's where I found Circuit Stream. And I took the, I took the, first I took the, the C Sharp course back in December or November last year. And then I took uh, the XR development course in February. And then I was working on this same project back then, but then after it ended, my computer crashed and I had to restart it from scratch. Oh and no. So, yeah, the 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 but it was good because I was able to kind of regroup and you know rethink of how I can do this. And so I'm I'm way more proud of this than if I would have continued with the pre year previous uh, version of my project. And so Basically, um, I wanted to make a game where it taught about the history of Christopher Columbus because as you will soon see in the video, uh, I'm making a startup called Viking and that is basically a company that I want to run that uh, makes games based on history. And because, you know, history has a lot of narratives and a lot of timelines that is very interesting and very, you know, engaging if you put it in a VR setting. And so basically showcasing the the um, hallmarks of history in virtual reality is what my company or my startup is about. So uh, nice. this is this is the sort of flagship program that I decided to go with because in America, the the basis of American history is predicated on Christopher Columbus finding America. And so that's how I decided to go with, you know, him instead of say Confucius or Julius Caesar, you know, or any other historical figure. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, if anybody else doesn't have anything to say, I'll just have Lucy start the video. Absolutely, let's do it. Um, and I know we are, we're almost, um, so we are going to go over time a little bit. So hopefully everybody can right. stick around. Um, and let's get uh, Jacob's project up on here. That's my logo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>
and amazing. Oh my gosh. And that music just really takes you to the edge of your seat. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Did you have any thoughts before we hear from Gabrielle and Dima? Um, I, I guess I could mention real quick how um, the interaction course kind of gave me the tools to do all this. Um, before taking the course, I was really, I didn't have any UI. So all the UI, you know, I see San just said that she liked the compass. So uh, I didn't have anything in there. So uh, the interaction design course had taught me how to implement UI in a engaging and effective way. And then also the animations that you see how they can, you know, run and walk. That was, you know, all the interaction design. And so it was very uh, rewarding to go through that course because it helped me get this far. And now moving forward, I have what I need to go and basically complete this program, you know, and then have, say, other people that know how to model and, you know, mm -hmm. get, because uh, I, I do want to have like uh, historically accurate models, you know, because they were, you know, placeholder characters and I want to have actually the model that depicts Christopher Columbus in his likeness. And so mm -hmm. I don't have any blender experience. So maybe that could be a shameless plug for somebody who knows how to do that to, yeah. to help me out. <laughs> and Collaborators. So, yeah. <laughs> there um, you go. So yeah, that's all what I've gotten from the interaction course. And then my one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Ashley, she really helped me out with some of the UI and also the animations, but also the gold, because we kind of spent about two, three weeks on gold just from, you know, counting it up and then having it be in the inventory. That is, you know, you would think that that would be a simple, you know, thing just to count gold and add it to a, you know, a certain inventory, but that is a very complex endeavor. And so she really helped me out with that. And then, yeah, that's, that's, I, I got nothing but thanks for all those uh, people, Tyrell, Ashley, and then the whole interaction course itself. So, yeah. Amazing. That's great to hear. All right, Gabrielle and Diva, take it Dima. away. Yeah, and uh, I, I really like the, the vastness of, of the maps that you explore. Uh, and uh, so I, I had a question. So, um, uh, how did you create those maps, uh, those large maps with vegetations, with forests? And then how do you plan to either add new stuff or add uh, some details to those maps, such as like vegetation, I don't know, animals or, or whatever you planned? Uh, do you plan or, or did that by hand or using some sort of uh, basically like random placement of stuff? I just wonder what, what, what do you think about uh, the kind of expanding it or adding new details? And, uh, um, yeah. yeah, so I'll, I'll answer the first question with the, the how I made the map. I did not make the map. I bought it or downloaded it from the asset store because mm -hmm. I did before when I before my computer crashed, I did make an actual map. But, you know, my computer crashed and I said, no, I don't want to do it no more because it took about three days to make a map. So I just yeah. downloaded it from the asset store. But I did uh, use a terrain tool to kind of paint trees and grass and uh, sand and stuff. So uh, that's the first question. And then the um, adding the details to make it pop. Uh, that's my next step because I do have plans on adding like animals and plants and the that village that you saw with like the dirt and the fire. I want to expand on that. And so that's my next step like immediate next steps, but the future steps would be having this thing kind of flushed out because I do have more scenes that involves the first island because after Christopher Columbus leaves the island, he goes back to Spain and then the queen of Spain gives him an order to go back and, you know, keep keep up with the island and, you know, let her know how, how it's developing and then he returns and the island was on fire because it's a it's a like a re revolution or a, a it's like a war between the natives and you know the people that were 
uh, developing on the island. And so that's kind of how I want to end my program is with that scene kind of dramatic, you know, climax. And that's basically how I want to uh, do this, uh, do this program. Yeah, nice. and I like the, the 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 fact that you could pick between different characters. So I suppose that maybe in your vision, I, I wonder if they might have different powers. And you also skip through at the beginning, but it was there was a narrative, right? There was some some mm -hmm. people were talking to each other, so that would give context about probably what you were going to see, what you're going to meet. So in a way to to tell the story. Do you have any any plan for the uh, for the different characters or power or, or things or do you imagine them to be the same? Uh, I didn't think to make any uh, deviations from, you know, any sort of abilities the characters have. But mm -hmm. the main thing I wanted to do is have like a like a diverse, you know, because I do want a, like a Christopher Columbus character, but I'm going to still keep the other three, you know, to, to have that diversity. Maybe add a female, you know, player as well. Uh, but the point for the, you know, the little narrative at the beginning, I added that from, you know, this plugin called a uh, dialogue editor. And so that's mm -hmm. where I got that little text box. And then I actually drew the little icons, the little, you know, character icons that, you know, was on the left of the narrative. I drew those and then put them in the, in the game because I, I was going to go online and buy or, you know, download one of them. And then I decided to just draw it because it would be quicker and then I wouldn't have to go through no uh, copyright or legal anything. So that's how, you know, I wanted yeah, to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recommend to check out uh, uh, one talk by a guy who was one of the developers of the latest Spider-Man game, where they had huge CT with millions of millions of details. And they didn't place all of the details by hand. They had a procedural uh, kind of, basically uh, they used Houdini to place some of the things, some of the like features in the city on buildings and stuff like that. So basically they, they had a predefined map of the of New York, but then they added some details to building and events, uh, basically using Houdini. And if you're using Unity, there is a plugin that, uh, that you can use to, for example, if you have a, a just a landscape you can fill it with uh, trees or, or lakes or even some maybe uh, NPCs uh, uh, without uh, putting, you know, lots of lots of effort to do that manually. So recommend to check it out uh, in the it's, comment it's called, section. Uh, uh, yeah, so there is a program, yeah, Houdini. It's basically is, an, is a separate editor that allows to do different procedural stuff uh, where you basically like use nodes and then create uh, either like ge geometry or some type of, uh, say, logic. And yeah, there is a plugin with Unity. And let me post a link to Houdini as well. All right, I'll, I'll check it out, thanks. Amazing. Well, uh, thank you so much, Jacob, and congratulations. Thank you to Gabrielli and, uh, and, and Dima. Um, so I will... That's the, our last presentation of the day. I do have a quick wrap up. I know we're over time, but I just wanted to uh, give every, all of the students a big round of applause. We just, all right, everyone, a huge congratulations. That was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so um, I do, if anybody wants to start heading to the uh, post discussion in VR, you're welcome to do so. I'm just gonna do the prize draw in a quick wrap up. So let us go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go ahead to the prize draw. So I'm going to, to the prize draw. We are uh, going to select one person who's going to win a free one on one session of 1.5 hours with one of our expert instructors. So I'm going to do a random draw based on um, the students. So students fill out surveys, feedback surveys throughout our course. And uh, the more surveys they fill out, the bigger the chance to win. So um, I'm just going to get, see if, I, let me show you, I'm going to get a random here. 
random number generator, we have 69 submissions and one, two, three, generate 52. And if I bring here the list, and we have position 52 is Maxime. Congratulations, Maxime. <laughs> there you go. You get uh, one Thanks. more session to continue your project. <laughs> Thank you. Crazy. You're very welcome. All right. So now we have I'm just going to quickly wrap things up. So if you are interested in that, if you're looking to get into um, XR and you'd love to take the, the, the interaction design prototyping for XR course, we do have an X cohort on November 8th. So um, in addition to all of those techniques that you learn, you get three hours of instruction per week, five office hours per week. It's flexible part-time and you have lifetime access to the recordings after they've been uploaded. So you do get live classes, but they're all recorded for you to access afterwards. And you also get industry recognized certifications and the option to add on a weekly one-on-one -on -one, uh, session to get support on a personal project, such as all the students here today did. Um, you get a certification at the end. So uh, the Circuit Stream Certified XR Designer, as well as the Certified Professional Artist in Unity, you get the chance to take that test to get the exam. If you're interested, you can go on our website, download the syllabus, contact our admissions um, team. And that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I'm sorry about the, the tech issues and for going over time, but it was just so special to get everyone's details and explanations in there. I do would, I would like to welcome you all to join us on Slack. Um, let me just get the link here for you. We can continue to chat. Oh, that's not what I wanted. One second here. Let me, and I'll post it here in the chat. So we're going to head over to a post show discussion in VR, and it's going to be an old space VR, but if you don't have a headset, no need to worry. You can join via web browser. I'm going to post the instructions here and uh, we'd love to see you there. You can talk to perhaps Gabrielli and Dima and some of the students. So it will really be a pleasure to, to see you all there. Give me one second so I can post the instructions. And if anybody has any questions or comments, for me, feel free to, to post them in the chat. All right, so let's see here. As you can see, my computer is being such a great partner, you know, you know today collaborating so much. <laughs> but that's that's how we do. We we improvise and we you know, stay connected with you because that's important. And I've got the instructions. Perfect. All right. All right, see you, Sonia. So these are the steps. So you can download Altspace VR if you haven't already. Then um, all you need to do is um, create, let me, let me put it up on here. Yeah, so download Altspace VR. You create an account, you create an avatar, and then you enter the room via this code DKI988. And I can post you the link to Allspace VR. Oh, that's totally fine, Louise. Thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And that's it, everyone. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in Altspace VR. And if not, to see you in our community. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you later. Bye.